Hello and welcome to America Latina Story. Many Mayan sites surpass Bonham Park in grandeur, magnificence, and archaeological interest. However, Bonham Park takes a special place in Mayan studies and archaeology, for it is the site that revealed to the world, through its painted murals, the cruelty and violence of a society and culture that were thought until then peaceful. And because its discovery encapsulates an all too frequent tale of adventure, human passion, treason, and death. It is now time to present the three main characters of this dark story. Let us begin with Herman Charles Frey, later known as Carlos Frey, the son of a couple of Swiss migrants born in 1915 in Staunton, Illinois. He was a draft dodger and a drifter who had spent several years traveling on foot in the jungles of southeast Mexico. He had finally established himself in some Mexi Francho in the Ocosinco region and had married a 15 years old illiterate Lacandon Indian named Caralampa Solis. He was undoubtedly very familiar with the area and its people. He would, later on, pay for his modest background and his rejection of the outside world. The second one, John Bourne, was 19 at the time of the events, heir to the Singer family, a victim of his upper-class origin, he was the object of many suspicions in the affair. He always declared himself a close friend of Carlos Frey, with whom he shared most of the adventure. Nothing contradicts his statement. The third and last one, photographer and cinematographer Gilles Ely, appears to be the bad guy of the story. Isn't he reported to have said during the expedition, to get ahead in this world, you have to use people like rungs in a ladder. One thing is certain though, Ely was a tough professional and a social climber who wanted his name on top of the bill. And an idealist who had adopted local customs and a wealthy young lad in search of sensation were no match for him. It all began in the fall of 1945 when Paramount producer Kenneth McGowan commissioned Ely to complete a photographic survey of Mayan ruins in southern Mexico. It seems that Ely had heard about some newly discovered ruins in the region by Chicleros. Through his family connections, John Bourne managed to be part of the trip as some sort of assistant. Carlos Frey was hired as a guide to organize the expedition. The base camp was to be in a place named El Cedro, in the territory of the Lacandan Indians, not far from the Guatemalan border. The place consisted of four huts that formed the headquarters of the local Chicleros, many of whom were fugitives from justice. Thus, in November 1945, began the difficult exploration of some of the recently discovered ruins. Oxla Huntun, Miguel Angel Fernandez, and the so-called B ruin. But something happened shortly afterwards that triggered the chain of events. Once the survey done, Ely secretly sent messages claiming to be the sole discoverer of the sites. This infuriated Frey, and the group split up, Frey and Bourne teaming up to pursue the exploration of the area on their own. 
Bourne flew to Mexico City to purchase the necessary equipment that included an element that would prove immensely valuable, a Victrola wind-up phonograph with a few opera records. And so, a few weeks later, Frey and Born sat in the evenings in a clearing in the jungle with their new friend, the Lacandon cacique Chan Bor, listening over and over again to Arias song by Caruso. Chambor and the members of his group were so delighted with the music that they decided to reward the two foreigners by showing them a secret Mayan site buried deep in the nearby jungle. And so, on February 6, 1946, seven structures of the Bonampak site were brought to light. Frey and Born stayed long enough to do the necessary releves, but soon they had to leave the place in a hurry, as it emerged that some of the Chicleros planned to murder them to steal their belongings and equipment. Meanwhile, Healy had learned of Frey and Boone's explorations and had hurriedly notified the authorities in Merida that the pair was digging in temples and exporting illegally Mayan antiquities. Their job done, the two friends went to Mexico City, had the films developed, two copies of each shot printed, as well as two copies of the site map and its exact location. Then, on March the 14th, Frey went to report officially the ruins to Senor Juan Palacios of the Instituto Nacional de Antropología y Historia, whilst born boarded a plane home. Here could have ended the discovery of Bonampak, but it was not to be. In May 46, Healy went to Bonampak, where he was shown the yet unknown structure with the murals. In short, Frey and Bourne had discovered the Bonampak site, Healy, its murals. During his stay, Healy made sure to erase all traces of Frey and Bourne's visit. Then, some confusion occurred within the Carnegie Institution in Washington regarding the claims sent by Frey and Bourne on the one end and Healy on the other. For a time, Healy was considered the sole discoverer of the ruins, and it was not until 1955 that Frey and Bourne were associated with the discovery of Bonampak. But the story is not over yet. In the spring of 1949, the Mexican government organized a 21 members expedition to fully survey Bonampak. It included archaeologists, photographers, architects, artists, painters, medics, chemists, and journalists. Frey, who wanted some sort of moral revenge, was to be their guide. On the 3rd of May, Frey boarded a canoe on the Lacan A River with Luis Morales, the cameraman of Noticiario Mexicano, and Franco Lanzaro Gomez, a young and timid native. They had to transport a heavy generator to the ruins. Nobody knows what happened, but the bodies of Frey and Gomez were found at the bottom of the river, four meters deep, holding on to each other. They appeared and disappeared in the reflection of the last rays of the sun. Some said that Frey, who was a good swimmer, had tried to save Gomez from drowning. Morales was found the following day, wandering in the jungle in shock. There has been some suggestion of wrongdoing and even murder, based on the jealousy Frey's new lover, Margarita Nakin, 
provoked among some of the members of the expedition. Frey was buried next to Gomez in the jungle near the site of the tragedy. John Bourne pursued his passion for pre-Columbian culture. Over the years, he acquired a large collection of pre-Columbian artifacts, known as the Bourne Collection, the subject today of much controversy around the authenticity of the objects and the manner in which they were acquired. Gilles Ely died in England in 1980. Besides being a renowned explorer and photographer, he was an expert on optics and astronomy and contributed to the development of alloy metals for the space program. If you want to know more about the impact of the discovery of Bonampax murals on Mayan studies, you may want to watch our program Deciphering the Mayan Script. For his part, Explorador Maya Eduardo González Arce has published a very comprehensive video on Bonampak. You will find both links below. Thank you for watching this program. Do not hesitate to subscribe to the channel. This is all for now. Goodbye.